today on Real Life. Going inside the music and ministry of Meredith Andrews. Digging deep into the word to tackle your hard questions. And author Dr. William R. Glaze discusses being touched by the breath of God. Today on Real Life. Welcome. This is Real Life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, He empowers you. And the Bible is your guide to abundant life. Yes. I'm Don Black with my co host Amy Schaefer. So glad to have you back. Thank I'm so you. glad to see you. It nice seems like it's been forever. I know. You went out of town. I was out of town. Everybody yeah. here and there. All kinds of activities. I know. Kids keep you on your toes, huh? They do indeed. We, we went to a graduation down in Tennessee. It was, we talked about it the other day. It was yeah. really nice. Your son graduated. Hard to believe it though. Hard to believe that he's a high school graduate. Yeah. I'm not, not that he didn't do well. He did yeah, fantastic. Yeah. But that that little boy now is a big man. Well, that's what I have little boys. And to picture them graduating college. And my daughter is going into high school this year. So, yeah. I know, I know how you feel. So I kind of feel like. Yeah, I you know, know how you feel. You, Jesus. It's, it's a, 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 the whole idea that they become adults and have your driver's license. Now, I understand. Oh. Yeah, I know. It's, I'm not ready for that. But I understand that one of your boys did a little artwork. It's so adorable. I had to bring it and share. This is like a total mom moment. <laughs> so Judah is well, my is. kindergartner. He, graduates, he graduated from kindergarten. Isn't that good? Well, he wrote these notes in his class at a, at a, a secular school. Jesus makes me happy. Oh, that's sweet. Is that so sweet? It so he's is. just learning how to write, and that's what's coming out well, of his let's, heart. Let's go, go back to that picture. I'm going to see which one is Jesus. Yeah. Now, he has yeah. to work on his oh, art no, no, yeah. a little bit. But it's but cool to watch. I'm assuming you, Jesus He'd be is, a big guy, wouldn't he? Or in the dress. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, one has a heart. I, you said a heart. I know. Kind of there, so so, so we're, we, we're focusing on the writing. You know, boys and drawing is oh, like, no. eh, you know, that comes later. You know, Gloria drew these beautiful pictures. And then he drew another picture that I had to show you. I like Jesus because he is Fun. And that is Judah and Jesus playing soccer. Oh, playing soccer. Is oh, that, that the that cutest is cool. thing ever? And cool. I thought Judah has really, at the age of six, learned the secret to life that Jesus makes you happy and that God is fun. Yes, that is. That, it that's, really is. And how old is he? He is six. He just well, turned six. For him to be able to do that in school. Yeah. Shows, him, shows us that he really means it. Yeah, and it's what's in his heart. But how many, we grow up into these adults that think that God is mad at us, yeah. that he's not fun, that if we serve God, we're going to miss out on all the fun, but it's actually just the opposite. When we serve God, that's when the fun begins. That he, his, he gives us abundant life. He does. Real life. Real life. Yeah. Real abundant, amazing that life. That could be a good name for a program, a it television should. program. Yeah. We ought to think about doing a real life. Pro oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hello. Well, we are doing a real life program. On this program, today's program, we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects. Me too. I love the Bible. I do too. We're going to talk about the Bible. I we're love gonna... it more. Oh, okay. No, you can, you can love, which, where's we your Bible? Bible? Oh, you've got the electronic uh, version. Electronic Bible. Uh, real Bible. We could discuss <laughs> that issue of, is it okay? Mine's can you get as much out of the word by reading it electronically as you can in the print? Well, that would be a good hard question. Okay. This, this is a red Bible. It is very red. So, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Why is it red? Well, it's just, you know, it's a pretty, pretty red Bible. It looks like a new Bible. It's pretty new. How often yeah. do you get a new Bible? Uh, too many, I too like, often. I don't like to get too many new. I like my ones with all my highlighting and my writing, and I know yeah. where my scriptures are at. I do, too. But, and, then, but, then, but then you need to transfer. I'm getting ready to trade. Uh, this is a new King James. I've been a new. And you are a King James guy. No, I was a New American Standard guy oh. for a long, long time, and now I'm shifting to New King James. Okay. And there's we can talk about that later. Do you read the other translations? I do. I actually do. I like parallel Bibles too. Yeah. That's another good hard question. Yeah. You know which sure. which version should we? Somebody take notes. The Scripture is all that we do. It's the center of what we do, and I, I want to share a Scripture that's real powerful in regards mm -hmm. to eternity because Romans. 
Paul said in Romans, the 10th chapter, the 9th and 10th verse, if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. You know, Amy, God made salvation so simple. It is so simple. It's so easy. Why do we make it complicated? Why do we want to make it religious? I think we try to mentally assent to it instead of just letting it pass all of this and just get right to the heart. It's so easy. Just confess with your mouth that he is Lord. Maybe you just tuned in today and you're like, I'm not sure why I'm watching Christian television, but maybe it's for this moment. Just to say, Jesus come into my heart. Just confess him with your mouth. Believe that he is the son of God and he will change your life forever and you will have the most fun <laughs> that you've ever had in your entire life. Looking for love in all the wrong places sometimes. Well, because the enemy is a counterfeiter. Yeah. He just, he, he convinces us that there's mm -hmm. another path to happiness, right, another right. path to fulfillment, right. but there isn't another path. Right. All the only way to design life that God has in mind for you is through His Son, Jesus. Right. So that's what we want to leave you with. I also want you to know this. The Holy Spirit, He is real. Yes. And He operates in our lives in a very tangible way. It's not just mystery, kind of the Holy Ghost kind of thing. It's mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is the third part of the Trinity. Right. And we celebrate the Holy Spirit. And at Pentecost is when the church was birthed that first Pentecost, we are going to have a special program the Saturday night before Pentecost. That will be the 7th of June from 8 to 10 p.m. live here in the studio. We're going to have a small audience. We're full, but we are taking reservations for overflow. So if you're interested in coming, let me tell you what we're going to do. We're going to have laying on of hands, anointing with oil. We're going to have preaching and teaching of the word and anointed praise and worship. Because we believe that God does what he has always done what he does now, he has always done. He's not changed. Right. And we believe that the right. word is true. We're going to talk about the Bible in just a minute. Right. You can reach out to us through the phones. You can reach out to us through our uh, email. Our prayer partners are just uh, here because of God's hand, Amy. Right. Yeah. They are here to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. So we want you to call us. We want to be in contact, in relationship with you. We love you in the Lord, and we want you to grow in him. Let's start right. the program with Meredith Andrews. She sings her big hit. She's great. Is it a big hit? I like her a lot. Big hit. Yeah. Not big for fan. a moment. Yep. So good.
you just heard her hit single, Not For A Moment, Meredith Andrews writes honest, compelling worship songs that resonate with an audience. I like this, as she puts it. She wants to hear from heaven and write from God's heart. She's a Dove Award winner and shares her heart of her ministry on this week's Real Life Today. Well, hello, Meredith. Hey, Terry. I was excited that you were going to be on Real Life. I have been following your music since you've been in college, which was just like last year, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can pretend like it was. <laughs> okay. And um, but you were a student at Liberty University, yes. and I remember hearing some of your music. My girls, I have four kids, and um, my girls were the ones that uh, introduced me to your music, yeah. and so. I've always been blessed, and so before we talk about you as the um, musician, let's talk a little bit about who you are. Tell us about your how, where you, where you were born sure. and, and that kind of stuff. Well, I grew up in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we went to a small church, my parents and I did, um, the kind of church where if you are on staff in any capacity, you actually pull double duty, you yeah. know? So sure, sure. my mom mm -hmm. was over the children's ministry, but she also led worship like every other Sunday, and my mm -hmm. dad was a deacon, and then he cut the grass every other Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so I feel like I grew up under a pew essentially, and, uh -huh. but I love that. I, I love the, the heritage that I have in that mm -hmm. and the, the kind of church that I went to. Um, you know, my youth group, we would spend nights, all nights, praying together, and we wow. had a youth ministry, a uh, youth event like every Saturday night called the Potter's House. And just, I can't tell you just how the Lord cultivated my desire just to be in His presence and to lead people into worship through that. Yeah. That's kind of where I started leading worship. I was going to ask, have you always, even as a <clears throat> young, young child, or not young child, teen, that you did you were singing? Yes, okay. I started singing when I was six. That was the first time I ever sang a solo oh, in church. Cool. And my mom and I did some Southern gospel music together when mm -hmm. I was really little, just in area churches. And then mm -hmm. when I was 12, I started singing back up and playing tambourine for our youth band. Oh, and then okay. that kind of, by the time I was 15, I was leading worship and playing keys for our youth band. And so um, that's kind of how it all started. Mm -hmm. And then when I graduated from um, high school, I went on to Liberty University, mm -hmm. uh, like you mentioned, Mm -hmm. and was on a couple teams there, one that traveled, and then my last two years, one that led worship for all our campus services. So your heart has always been, it seems, not just in singing, right. but in leaning worship. And, yes. and uh, so if you want to share some, some of your um, yeah. experiences with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Well, um, I remember when I was 17, I went to a Rebecca St. James concert. I remember her. Yeah, uh -huh. she was one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And I... I went away from that concert going, Lord, I, I would love to do something like that, but I don't know what it's supposed to look like, and mm -hmm. I don't know what you have in store. Mm -hmm. But whatever it is, I just surrender this gift to you. I surrender this desire to you. And the Lord said to me so clearly that night, it was a very defining moment in my life, and He just said, Meredith, be faithful where I've placed you. Mm -hmm. And at the time, you know, I'm leading worship for my youth group, and sometimes on Sundays at my church. And so I'm just like, okay, I just, I'm going to grow where I'm planted, I'm going to be faithful here, and the Lord is going to do what He wants to do. And I feel like I'm, my life is just a testimony of that. Like mm -hmm. God has opened the doors. I haven't had to push anything over. Oh. I haven't had to manipulate any circumstances or situations. Or I've just gone, okay, mm -hmm. Lord, help me to be faithful in this. Because I'm a firm believer that when you're faithful where God has you, like it's, it's so important even in that season, even if you don't feel like God is using you to the fullness of what he's going to, right. he's preparing you. Absolutely. You know? And it's yes. not, he's not going to give mm -hmm. us everything all at once because mm -hmm. we might not be able to handle it. Oh. You know, he's building our Absolutely. character and teaching us how to, to work mm -hmm. hard and be responsible and to count it as the privilege that it is. And mm -hmm. for me, now that I'm on staff at a church in Chicago leading worship for mm -hmm. our people, I, you know, I was telling you earlier, as we were getting ready. Sometimes I'll just stand there and cry because mm. I love being in the presence of God and I love being in the presence of the Lord with His people and getting just to, mm -hmm. to go, hey guys, this is, this is the best thing part of our week, that we Absolutely. get to approach the throne of grace together, mm -hmm. and we get to go before the Lord together, and, and when we're in the presence of God, that's when He does things, like it mm -hmm. changes us, and hopefully we're not the same as when we walk, first walked in oh, the door. Yeah. What an honor that you have to lead and usher people into yes. the presence of God through worship, through yes. music. I understand that you also write a lot of your songs with yes. you and your husband, yeah. and and so that's uh, that's amazing to me. Does he give you um, uh, inspiration and and a, a 
cultivates from there? Yeah, sure. When I was 12 was when I first started writing, mm -hmm. and, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing. I wrote a song with six verses and no chorus. I guess I thought I was a modern-day hymn writer, <laughs> you know. But you got to start somewhere. That's and right. uh -huh. back then I would put all of my songs on a cassette tape. I'd play them on my little keyboard, put them, record them on a cassette tape, and then I'd send them with the lyrics to Washington, D.C., to the copyright office, because mm -hmm. I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, at least they're legit now, you That's know, right. they're copyrighted. Um, but, yeah, you, the Lord is growing me in my songwriting as well. And, you know, a lot of the ways that I write is just out of seasons of life and mm -hmm. what God is teaching me, what God is showing me through His Word. And mm. actually, I just wrote a song this week, um, just a few days ago, um, just kind of out of that, like something that the Lord has been saying to me. Um, and even, like, you know, we've been on a tour together and, right. and something I've been able to share on, on this tour. But the fact that, you know, wherever people are in their mm -hmm. journey, that Jesus sees them. And so mm. I wrote a song the other day with my friend called Jesus Sees. Oh, and I think that's wow. so important. And if yeah. you don't mind me sharing, Terry. No, like, no, that's awesome. Please do. Yeah, I, so I sat under um, some teaching from my good friend Lisa Harper. I did mm -hmm. a women's conference with her recently. And she was talking about a passage I believe it's in Mark 11, but I could be wrong. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's in Luke 7, because she was okay. going with two of them. Who even knows? <laughs> but, sorry, I don't have my Bible in front of me. But she was telling the story about this widow who had just lost her only son. Oh, yes. And mm -hmm. it's um, in the Gospels. And, um, and Jesus sees her and mm -hmm. she's they're going along in this funeral p procession and um she's her, i'm sure her head is down and she's so grieved she's already mm -hmm. lost her husband and here she's lost her only son and she's like well what am i supposed to do now like maybe mm -hmm. i should I just take me too because i don't have any other reason to live you know so it's just you know what i dialogue right. i'm thinking you know like and um what's so amazing about that is it, it says that Jesus sees her and is mm -hmm. moved with compassion. Mm -hmm. Like he just has compassion on her and he walks up to her and he raises her son from the dead. Yes, he and, does. And it, she didn't see him. She right. didn't ask that Absolutely. he would do that because she was so um, buried mm -hmm. in her grief. She couldn't see past her mm -hmm. grief. But Jesus saw her and he went to her. Mm -hmm. And I just love that so much because... Uh, even no matter where we are in our lives, Jesus knows He is right there with mm. us. He's walking through the hard things with us, and He sees us even if we don't see Him. That's and great. that's one of the another kind of um, epiphany for me that I had was that, you know, I used to think that I would write songs out of my pursuit of God and my journey and walk mm -hmm. with the Lord and. But it's actually, I write those songs because God is always pursuing me, even on the days when I'm not pursuing Him. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, and that did mm -hmm. change my life. And I'm like, yeah. and praise God for that, because it takes pressure off of me. And I just go, wow, look at the grace and the patience and the kindness of God, mm -hmm. that He would pursue me, even on the days when I'm just like oblivious or I'm that's going right. the other way. That's you know? right. Well, I look forward to it. Um, Hearing that song. Yeah. Me, well, I, got, I, I can't sing it today because i got to practice it, but maybe okay. next time. We'll That'd, be That'd be great. That'd be great. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. It's been wonderful to get to meet you and know you and, and hear, hear more about how, you, how God's working in your life. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you Thank so you much, very much. Terry. So good to be here. Thank you. Later on Real Life. The panel opens up their Bibles and gets ready to take on the tough questions with your hard questions. Pastor Buck Schaefer continues his teaching series on the 7-Minute Word. And coming up next, Dr. William R. Glaze shares the importance of defending Scripture in his book, Touched by the Breath of God. That's next on Real Life. Join Dr. Frida Cruz, licensed professional counselor, and her guests as they provide practical solutions to real-life problems on Time for Hope. Jesus promised in John 10.10 a different way to live. The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. But sometimes life doesn't feel abundant. That's why I wrote God's Answers for Real Life, to help you discover the answers from the Bible about how to stop panic, fear, and depression, how to start fresh again, how to break sexual strongholds, 
how to know God as your provider, to find hope if you're hopeless, and for healing for your body. And what about the baptism in the Holy Spirit? These are just a few of the 30 topics that we will study together. I want you to have a copy of this book for yourself or to give to somebody that you love. Call 888-665-4483 and we'll send you one for your love gift to Cornerstone. Call 888-665-4483 or come to ctvn.org. God bless you. We're glad to welcome Dr. William R. Glaze back to real life. He's the pastor of Bethany Baptist Church in Pittsburgh. He's written a book to equip readers on how to depend on the Bible. He teaches that the Word of God is a powerful, supernatural tool. His book's titled Touch by the Breath of God, Why God-Inspired Books Are Not Lost. Mm. Dr. Glaze, so glad that you're back with us. Good to be here again. Yes. All right. God it's bless a blessing you. to have right. you with us. Okay. God you know, bless you. God bless you. The, Amen. Let me just get kicked right. We don't have a lot of time, and this is a big topic. Yes. So let's 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 dig into it. All right. A book about the value of the Bible, so important for us. What what motivated you to to do the work? And this is a this is a scholar's work. This is, it is. this has got a lot of research in it. So what what made you what made you do it? Well, as I was going out into the community witnessing came across a lot of individuals as you began to talk to them about Christ. And then, you know, when you present the gospel, you definitely have to go back to the Word of God and show them, you know, verses on salvation and how they can receive Christ. And kept running into people that would say, well, how do you know that the Bible is the Word of God? You know, aren't there missing books? Isn't the Bible filled with mistakes? Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it was just hard to get past that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you couldn't really talk to them about the Bible because, you know, they didn't, believe the Bible was authoritative. They didn't believe it was inspired by God. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to put together a tool that would help address those issues to kind of strip them of the, those arguments to say, okay, now, now that we've dealt with that, yeah. okay, let's, let's get down to the real nitty gritty. Right. So how much did you have to study? And what, what sort of, what did you study? What books and material did you grab from? Because there's a lot of research right. in this book. Well, the, the, the guest that was a singer uh -huh. before went to Liberty. I graduated yeah. from Liberty, too. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, I did a lot of, you know, uh, preliminary studies through my classes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to, you know, pull a lot of stuff together mm -hmm. from my seminary research and, you know, things that we had studied about bibliology, mm -hmm. you know, in seminary. And then, you know, I was able to go and get a lot of resources that refuted the Bible, that, right. you know, said the Bible wasn't the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And I, I referred to a lot of those sources because I wanted to know what the arguments were. I right. wanted to know what they were saying. So, I, you know, I tried to get books that, you know, uh, discredited the Bible and did a lot of research in that area, too. What's the biggest stumbling block that Satan puts in the lives of people about the Bible? Well, I think the biggest stumbling block that he puts in, uh, in people's life is that it's not you know, how, how can it be inspired by God? You know, mm -hmm. uh, how, how can it be a, a supernatural book? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's one of the things that I have really put a lot of uh, research in, into the mm -hmm. book. You know, I use the uh, acronym MIRACLE mm -hmm. and, and go through and talk about, you know, the, the M is for the miraculous unity yes. of the Bible. You know, I, I talk about I the... Love the it, you, I love that in the book about the unity of the Bible that you right. It was very, very good. Yeah, you know, you have, uh, loved it. you have over 40 authors that wrote over a 1600 year period, mm -hmm. different continents, uh, different languages, different occupation. Mm -hmm. And yet there's a common thread that goes through the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing, you know, how that even back in Genesis chapter three, it talked about the coming of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. and, and then that thread is just woven throughout the whole Bible. And it all comes together, just that unity in you know, over a 1600 year period. And, and they all came together on, around that thing. You know, it has to be supernatural. It can't happen without it being touched by the spirit. Right, right. Not, What other books got that? Right. Give me another yeah. reference book. 
that has got that type of a, of, of a theme right. doesn't exist. Well, you know, the, the other thing, too, that's interesting as I was doing research uh, for the book, uh, there were over 600 books that were floating around claiming to be inspired by God, right. you know, and, and so uh, people were kind of confused as to, well, you know, which ones are inspired. You know, there are books that are called pseudepigraphal books, mm -hmm. which are false writings. You know, we hear about the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel mm -hmm. of Philip, and all that. So there was 600, mm -hmm. and, and, and I, I like what Norman Geisler said. Norman Geisler said that, uh, you know, that we didn't, that, or the councils didn't determine which books would get in the Bible, mm -hmm. but as these councils came together, mm -hmm they discovered which books were inspired. Mm -hmm. You know, that in the Old Testament, you know, they looked at Mosaic mm -hmm. authorship. They looked mm -hmm. at, you know, the prophetic authorship. Mm -hmm. They t looked at what books were generally mm -hmm. accepted among the, uh, the Jewish people. And then as you go into the New Testament, mm -hmm. you know, you look at, you know, most of the New Testament books were either written by an apostle or somebody that was close to an mm -hmm. apostle. And so, you know, th these things began to surface, it's almost like cream rises to the top. Right, right. And so, you know, just inspiration was not necessarily determined, mm -hmm. but it was kind of like discovered. Yeah. And, and that, That's so powerful, <clears throat> Pastor, that the Holy Spirit birthed the Bible mm -hmm. in, the, in the lives of all these men and women, and then he sustained it mm -hmm. through Amen. tribulation and persecution. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and and very uh, aggressive attempts to destroy the Bible. Right, mm -hmm. and, and, and we see that, you know, there was an emperor, Diocletian, mm -hmm. you know, he tried to wipe out, yeah. you know, the whole scriptures, you know, French atheist Voltaire, you know, he tried to destroy the Bible and, you know, uh, people that have tried to destroy it, you know, it's ironic that, you know, in one situation, actually the, the printing press of one of the individuals that tried to destroy the Bible, the printing press was used by the Geneva Bible Society to actually print, print the Bibles off of his, uh, <laughs> off, off of his printing press. So, awesome. you know, so God, you know, God has a sense of humor in, in the midst of it all. Yeah. And, and, you know, we even see today, you know, attacks on the Bible yeah. by, you know, yeah. scholars that, you know, talking about, you know, well, there's certain parts that are inspired and certain parts right. that are not inspired. Mm -hmm. And so it might not be like a direct, you know, uh, like they burning the Bible or, you know, disbanding the Bible, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a subtle undercutting of the authority of the Bible. I loved how you talked about that theme of redemption tied throughout the Bible. I heard one time that the, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed right. and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Right. Yeah. And I love how you tie that theme. What is your favorite book of the Bible? I would have to say the Psalms. I, I, I love the song. Yeah. You know, as a matter of fact, when I signed my book, uh, I signed Psalm 1, 1 through 3. You know, blessed yeah. is the man. I, yeah. That's, yeah. that's my favorite psalm, you know, just uh, to know that you can be planted by the, the rivers of water and, and bring forth fruit in the Lord. So I'm excited about the Psalms. Could you imagine, guys, what life would be like oh without the Bible? Mm. No. What if we didn't have it? Right. What if we didn't have this word, his word? Mm. Right. But God in his sovereign plan knew that we had to have it. Amen. Yeah. And he knew that not only did we have to have it, it had to be alive. Right. Yeah. And I know myself, and I, I know you guys too, every time I read it, it's different. Yep. Right. It's a different it piece of it. Alive. Right. And it's amazing to me. You, tell, you, you, you mentioned the attack on the Word and how, how man wants to pull it down. Right. And then sometimes we dilute the Word by translating it or paraphrasing it to a place that we take truth out of the Word. And right. We kinda, make it into a neutered position. Right. Mm -hmm. But God's faithful through it all. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and I, I deal with that in the book as I, I have a chapter in there mm -hmm. on translations yep. because the question that I always get, you know, which translation should I use? Right. The NIV, New American Standard, mm -hmm. King James. And, and, and one of the things that I point out is that there are translations that were faithful to the uh, original text. text. You know, uh, there are over 24,000 uh, manuscripts of the New Testament over mm -hmm. 10,000 manuscripts of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And so when they, you know, when these translating committees translate, they go back to these original manuscripts. Mm -hmm. And if they are faithful to those, like you said, that God protects his truth, you know, throughout all generations. Yes. It's just amazing that there's that many original uh, manuscripts. Right, right. I mean, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. That he's preserved those. And then when they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. Oh, wow. Which tied the Old Testament into modern day. Right. Mm -hmm. It just, yeah. it, it's, it's the hand of God. Right. Well, you know, the amazing thing about the, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls is that the uh, earliest manuscripts that we had were like uh, 900 A.D. Mm -hmm. 
And so, you know, a lot of people began to say, well, you know, look how far removed, you know, uh, the manuscripts that we all have are from, you know, the original writings. Mm -hmm. And so God, what does he do? He allows this little shepherd boy over in the fields of, uh, in the hills of Judea. He's walking along, his sheep get lost, mm -hmm. and he throws a rock to try to scare him, and he hears a chink. And he goes into the cave, and he finds all these, uh, you know, these clay jars with these manuscripts in them. Mm -hmm. And it takes us back from 900 A.D. to almost to 1,000 years to, you know, 200 uh, B.C. Mm -hmm. So over 1,000 years, and we come to find out that there's very little variations from what we have now and what, you know, was in the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's amazing. amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. I love what you said here. It is, talking about the Bible, the most circulated book of all times, the most printed book of all times, the most translated book of all times, and the best-selling book Amen. of all times. Yes, it is. There is nothing like the Word of God. So thanks for writing Amen. a book about it. It was really good, yes, actually. Thank you. Amen. Okay, well, today it's my favorite time ever, I think, in the show, because it's time <laughs> for today's study in God's Word. This week, we have a very special teacher. I actually think we should call him Pastor McDreamy because <laughs> he's the love of my life, the hottest pastor in town by far, oh. Pastor Buck Schaefer. Just keeping it real at real life. He's the pastor of Grace Life Church in Monroeville, Pennsylvania. His series is called In Your Face Grace. It's so good. And he concludes his teaching now on today's seven minute word. You know, so many people take the old covenant approach to the goodness of God in Christ, and we can't do that. You know, the greatest revelation, I believe, of the New Testament that was different from the old was, in the old, it was Jehovah God. But in the new, Jesus wants us to see him as Abba Daddy, Abba Father, Daddy. You see, God wants you to boldly come to the throne of grace because he wants you to have some grace in your face. You see, the, the manifestation of grace is in the face of Jesus Christ, we found out in 1 Corinthians. But as I look at this, I see one of the greatest scriptures uh, in Luke chapter 15, and you've heard it before. But we know about the prodigal son. He went out, spent everything. He, 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 riotous living, prostitutes, drugs, alcohol, buying fast cars, living in slick hotels. And he was just, he lost it all. And you know what? The father was waiting for him to come home. The father was waiting. And here we see the heart of God in Christ. He's out there, but pastor, you know, he's living in sin. He's doing his own thing. How many times are we doing our own thing? How many times are, are we just messing up and making mistakes and sometimes you say, God, I'm just a mess up. Well, you know what? That's not true. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. You got new DNA. You're an overcomer. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You're victorious. You're more than a conqueror. You know what? That's the way we see God. But you know how you get that, you know how you get that victorious mindset of, of always triumphing in Christ Jesus? You see yourself the way God sees you. You see yourself the way that father, the way that father was waiting. And I don't believe he was, he was probably sad until he saw the son. I believe every day he probably walked that porch and waited for the day when his son would come home. And one day he saw someone coming that looked like his son. He pulled up his robe and he started running. This is the image of our heavenly father that Jesus presents. He starts running and the son's like trying to confess his sin. And I'll tell my father this and I'll tell him that and I'll tell him that. He says, son, be quiet. He says to his servants, he falls upon him and kisses his neck. I can see the biggest smile of a father ever. He says, go get the best robe, put it on his back, put a ring upon his finger, put shoes upon his feet, for my son that was dead is now alive. Kill the fatted calf. And the Bible tells us that immediately the party and celebration, the band struck out, the banquet began, and the older religious legalistic brother was in the field worried about, what about me, what about me? And the father said, is it not reason that we should make merry, that we should celebrate? My son that was dead is now alive again. Listen, the message of grace in your face is God's goodness is what leads people to repentance. It's not how good we do church. It's not how great we sing. It's not our ability to get to God. It's God's ability through Christ to get to us. That when you see that his face is smiling at you continually and you know his face is filled with compassion and the face of grace, 
and the love of God that overwhelms us and consumes us and we don't have to fear because perfect love casts out all fear. I'll never forget, I was at one of my son's soccer games here a little while ago and I was on the side of the sidelines. I was screaming, I was yelling, I was hooping and one lady looked up, my wife said, he needs his blood pressure medication. And I was like, no, I'm just excited about my son. Man, I'm pumped. I'm, I'm smiling. And, you know, I'm cheering him on. And all of a sudden, the ball pops out of a crowd of people. Gabriel knocks it a couple feet. There's nobody but him and the goalie. And I'm thinking he's 25 yards out. He's too small to shoot it. But out of nowhere, he pops back and he rips that ball. It goes right into the net. And you should have seen the smile on my face. I started screaming. I started yelling for my boy. I said, that's my boy. He's awesome. He's, and I'm just yelling and screaming, hollering. And he gets in the car and looks in the back seat of the car. He says, Dad, why were you screaming, acting crazy about that? And I said, son, you scored a goal. Whether you do or not, I'm going to rejoice over you with singing and shouting and dancing because I love you. You're my son. You know what? The Bible tells us this is the way we're to pray. Aaron is to pray this way over his sons. He says this, This is the way you shall bless Israel. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you and guard you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and enlighten you. May he be gracious and merciful to you. He says, may the Lord lift up. I love this in the Amplified. Listen as we close today. May the Lord lift up his approving countenance upon you. May he give you peace and tranquility continually. Listen to this in the Message Bible. May God bless you and keep you. May God smile on you and gift you. May God look you full in the face and make you prosper. May God smile upon you today. May God look you full in the face. Remember the song we used to sing in the 70s, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will go strangely dim in his light and his glorious grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Listen, today as we wind down, the old covenant, we had to be hid in the cleft of the rock. But in the new covenant, we are hidden in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are hidden in Christ, and the Father's not scowling. He's not mad. He's not angry. God is happy with you. God is pleased with you. He wants to bless you. He wants to give you the kingdom. And today and through eternity, the face of my heavenly Father, he's not looking at you like this. He's not looking at you like this. He's not looking at you like that or questioning you. There's a big old smile, like the Joel Osteen smile. He just loves you. We just love you. We believe God wants to bless you. Yes, that is. That's who God is. And that's his goodness. He wants his glory to pass by you. And you know what he wants you to see today? He wants you to seek his face. Not what's in his hand, but as you seek his face, you'll see his glory is in his countenance. And once you see his face, everything changes about your life. Would you seek God's face today because he loves you? You are his beloved son in whom he is well pleased. Remember, this is grace in your face. the righteousness of God in Christ. 
Jesus Christ came to become you at the cross that you might become him today at the Father's right hand. Hallelujah. God does not do miracles because of your obedience. God does miracles because of Jesus' obedience at the cross and you are the beneficiary. In the very area of your weakness, God's grace super abounds. I'm always so blessed when someone says our program is the fastest and most uplifting television program. I know you feel the same, Jack. And that's because good news travels fast, Rexel. And let me say this, the world is hearing nothing but doom and gloom on the news at night. But we can tell you the good news, this world will never end. Ephesians 3.21, for it's a world without end. Please make time and join us this week. Don't miss the next Jack Vanapie Prince. Welcome back. You know, Amy, I was just watching you as Buck was teaching and preaching, and yes. you had a little radiant glow <laughs> about you. He is McDreamy. <laughs> McDreamy. Yeah. Is he amazing? In oh, your face, boy. Grace. In your face, Grace. I love it. Well, we are, uh, we're blessed that he came and shared with us <laughs> that God would allow him to do that. Yeah. And we're blessed Thank that you. Thank you for inviting him. Oh, absolutely. He'd come back. Yeah. I'm interested in the next, in the next series of teachings. He's the best. Well, we're here, we're here now for our regular Thursday hard questions segment. And are you ready for these hard questions? <laughs> Today, my co-host Amy is uh, with me, as you see, and so is Pastor Glaze, and so, so is our brother. Uh, I'm so glad that you're here with us, too. It's just not the mm -hmm. same when, when you're not with us, and we don't have the chaplain in the house. Yeah, you gotta have a little crazy Chuck every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. A little crazy, I don't see you as crazy. <laughs> but I'm glad you're here too, because this is the time when we talk about things that are uh, subjects that you may not really hear about a lot. Mm. You know, and we want, we want to open the, 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 the floor up and say, hey, what, what do you want to hear about? What, what is God charging in your life and how are you learning? And our first question comes from a viewer who, who sent the question in. See, our panelists Ooh. don't know. See, they don't know what our, what our questions are. We keep this very secret. Yeah. It's kind of like the Oscars, you know. Where we People just... ask me that all the time. Do you get to read the questions ahead of time and prepare? I was like, oh, no. That would be way too nice. That's right. <laughs> That's if we right. can prepare. You'd come in with a sermon. A sermon, yeah. <laughs> We'd have four different sermons, every one of our hard questions. We wouldn't be able to know. It's, it's, it's totally impromptu. And our first question comes... And it's this, is there a, a scripture to clarify that if the wine that Jesus drank was fermented or was it grape juice? And that comes from Joanne from West Middlesex, Pennsylvania. So mm -hmm. what do you say? Was it, was it a fermented wine that Jesus drank or that he made? Remember he went to the wedding mm -hmm. uh, feast and-, and, and First he, miracle. First miracle. He turned, turned water, water into wine. Water into wine. Don't is, you think it would have said Water into grape juice? Well, you got to know the language. You got to go into the languages and understand the language, which mm -hmm. I, I can't tell you that I have. Have any of you guys looked at that? And what, what's, I, what's your response? I have. Uh, Paul says, be not drunk with wine mm -hmm. because that leads to debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. And it is the same word that is used there that is used in this passage. Now, I have uh, checked my Kyle and Deleach. Uh, Greek, and and it can refer to um, new wine, mm -hmm. which or or sweet wine, which is unfermented, mm -hmm. but that is very very rare. So you know, well, there's cultural things mm -hmm. too, Pastor. I, I, what, what's your thoughts? Well, I know there's a verse in the Psalms that talks about wine that makes the heart glad. Yeah, you don't know, great. <laughs> Grape juice, <laughs> it's not going to make your heart glad. But I, I don't think that, you know, when we think about distilled alcohol that is made today, I don't think that it was, you know, distilled like that. I think that it might, you know, had a little uh, fermentation and, you know, it, and, and you probably had to drink a whole lot of it to, you know, get to inebriate it. But I, I do think that it, you know, it did have... Uh, certain amount of potency to it. I think it was a real thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I grew up where, you know, it was anti-drinking, anti-wine, you know, that's just not what we did. And, um, and then we started traveling in ministry mm -hmm. and we would go overseas to 
Europe. Mm -hmm. And I saw the most interesting things. Like when we would come, they would, they would hide bottles of wine. They would hand out bottles of wine to new guests at the church services. And I thought that is, like it, it really is a cultural thing too because they mm -hmm. drink a glass at dinner and they don't get drunk. I'm with, I'm with these people all week, you know, 10 days at a time, and they don't get drunk. So it's, it really is a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't prefer the taste, which might be good. Uh, so, but my, my first drink of, of wine was when I was in Czechoslovakia, before it was Czech and Slovakia mm -hmm. and broken up, and I got food poisoning. Oh and the medicine yeah. they had was weird, and so they said, well, drink, drink wine. And it was my first. So I did, my first experience with wine was not glamorous at all. Well, we've got an ongoing discussion on our Facebook page in, in regards to this. Should Christians drink wine right. or not? You mm -hmm. know, and I think it is. There is a culture. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting to see the different perspectives, mm -hmm. you know, how people come at it from different perspectives. But how do you approach that? So Jesus did make and did drink what we would consider to be a wine today mm -hmm. uh, at some form of it. Right. What, what about today? How, what about Christians? What, what should we do? Well, you know, to me, I, I think that uh, each person has to pray and be led by the Holy Spirit. Right. Uh, you know, there are people that have been alcoholics. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for them to, you know, right. maybe have a drink of wine, it might set off that whole downward spiral again. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And there are other people. You know, if I can share a testimony real quick. Sure. Uh, when I first got mm -hmm. saved, I gave up all my rock music. I mean, mm -hmm. all my albums. I just got rid of them. What it, rock music? Well, you rock? know, uh, Chicago, Doobie Brothers. Oh, you know, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay and, and what happened was that as I began to grow, you know, mm -hmm. I, I can listen to it now. Mm -hmm. But before, it was associated with a whole nother lifestyle. Right. That's right. exactly and, right. And if I had listened to it, it would have mm -hmm. kept me in that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. right. And so now I can because I, I have that spiritual maturity to be able mm -hmm. to do it. And I think it's the same thing mm -hmm. with, with this alcohol, you know, mm -hmm. that some people can handle it mm -hmm. in, in a way that it doesn't, you know, affect right. them negatively. Right. Right. And, and so each person has to be led by well, the Spirit. What, what about your witness in the community? Mm -hmm. Does that get impacted if you're out and you, you're seen in a place drinking a, a, a wine beverage or a beer beverage? That's a good question. What, how does that impact your witness? Uh, I think that if that impacts your witness, you don't have a very strong witness. Really? Now, for that, but for that reason, I don't do it. I mean, the fact that you love people, the fact that you care for them and they know it. I go to Burger King every morning and get a cup of coffee. I have developed a relationship through that little crazy speaker, and, and they know who I am, they know what I stand for, and if, if that cup of coffee or that glass of beer impinges my testimony. My testimony may be kind of well, weak. You can't put coffee and beer on the same pat uh, category and discuss that as equals because they're not apples for apples. That's true. Though they have social implications. I wish mm -hmm. we could go on with it. I'm more concerned that you're getting your coffee at Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I'm shocked go to with all of the amazing <laughs> coffee places we're going to burn. Well, we're it's at, on the way. I mean, maybe a flame grilled I got, burger. I got to blow the whistle. Yeah. We're, 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 we're out of time. <laughs> Great discussion. We, we'll, we'll do a follow-up. We, we want your hard questions, too. So send in hard questions to us. We want to know about what you want to know about. So send them <laughs> in to us. You said the address on the screen. And as you write that down, I want to also say about Pastor Glaze, I want you to know that this mm -hmm. book that we have, come back when you come back to me, this book is something that you should have in your personal library. You need, you need to have a defense. Be ready to make a defense. Yeah. So you need to have a defense about why the book is the book. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to get a copy. You come to our website, we'll show you how. Look at today's program, we'll show you the links on how to get a copy. Everybody should have one, and we'll be right back. Tomorrow on Real Life, the music and ministry of the Binions. And it's our weekly Signs and Wonders program with a special message from God's Word by Pastor Gary Mitrick. And the team prays for the victory you need in your life. That's tomorrow on Real Life. For them. We're back here to pray with our prayer requests. We're so Thankful that you've called in. There's still time. You can call us. Know that when you call us, we take your prayer requests very, very seriously. And uh, 
Chuck, what, what, what do you have? What prayer requests do you have? We have uh, Melissa, who needs prayer, backsliding, separated in her marriage. Mm -hmm. Kathy needs wisdom for her family, protection for her family. And uh, we have Bama, who is wanting salvation, physical healing. So... Uh, I've got, I've got one pretty, pretty urgent one. Danielle, 33 years old, I think Barbara called in for her. She's having a procedure today at 2 p.m. Mm. and we want to pray for her blood work. There's a white cell or low and we want to pray for God's touch mm -hmm. upon Danielle, his mm -hmm. healing touch. Uh, Terry called at a stroke at 42 years old mm. and is in a wheelchair. We want th she wants therapy, we want God's touch to restore yeah. you Amen. in yeah. Jesus' name. And uh, Taylor, I think Taylor or Taylor's, uh, called in with family problems and special financial issues, wants to be reunited, reunited with her son and daughter and their grandchildren. Boy, mm. that's what the Lord wants to Amen. for you. Yes. Amy, what do you have? Uh, Patty needs the mind of Christ and more sleep. Oh boy. I've had more people say they're not sleeping well, yeah. and really the Lord gives his beloved sweet sleep so you can lay your head down at night. And physical healing, and someone else is having a surgery today, so we pray Pastor, in Jesus' quick. name. Uh, Karen, uh, dental issues that uh, there will be no infection. Uh, David for healing for osteoporosis, and Morrell wants a prayer for a court case to be resolved. Amen, and the Lord does that kind of stuff, brother. Mm -hmm. He does that, he brings intervention. Praise report, hallelujah. Hey. Chris called in from Pittsburgh and has uh, rededicated his or her life, Chris can go either boy or girl, but to the Lord, hallelujah. Amen. There's a salvation and your rededication Amen. in Jesus' name. Ever. It is, yes. let's put our prayers together. Put them in here, let's, Amen. Lord, let's just send them off. In Jesus' yes. name, Lord, we pray for every one of these Amen. needs, the procedures for today, Lord, the medical needs, God, for the financial Amen. needs, Lord, yes. for the relationship Fantastic. restoration, Amen. God. We trust Amen. these people into your care, Lord. You love them, yes. and Lord, you have a plan for them, and it includes health, yes. and Lord, it includes Amen. prosperity, and Lord, it full includes package. a full and abundant yes. life. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So Amen. glad. Thank you, brother. Amen. Good to be Good here. Good to be with you. All right. God bless Let's you. Come back and be with us. Amen. Glad God, that you were with. able to be with us, too. Let's close with Meredith Andrews, the gospel. Now, get it. Get this. The gospel changes everything. everything. Amen. 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 will change is everything the turning point in history and even now it's changing me from who I was the story of my Savior calls me to the wonder Gospel changes everything. It is changing me. The gospel changes everything. A turning point in history. And even now it's changing me from who I was. The story. God would come to rescue me from who 
Kindness of my Savior calls me to.